Okay, hey there. Next part of the oscilloscope lab. Here he is, displaying some stuff. And let's see what he's displaying and what circuit we're measuring. So uh, what we've got here is just a very simple circuit. We've got wires coming across, puts this 220 ohm resistor, 220, red, red, brown, uh, in series with this 1K ohm resistor, so 1000 ohm resistor. And you see that's brown, black, red, and that gives you a thousand in the color coding. On the other side of the circuit, we've got this orange wire that goes back to that wire, back up through and over and to this function generator, which is outputting at 60 hertz. Okay? And if we look at the measurement we're making of that output, so I attached the, the input one of our oscilloscope here okay, and here across the whole circuit right across those orange and blue wires and that's showing us if you can read that that we have a waveform that's 60 hertz i don't have the measurement there but you can get that from the uh, the time division right so we're four milliseconds a box we're about two periods on the screen and we've got 10 count boxes so if you work that out you'll find that the frequency corresponds to 60 Hertz now the other measurements we've got here just concentrate on the yellow for now because that's the trace that we've got displayed uh, we've got RMS which is 2.4 volts and peak to peak what that means is we're looking at the whole height of the wave in voltage okay and that's 7.2 volts you see that those two numbers, though they describe the same wave, are very different. And that shows you uh, just how profound <laughs> the, the difference between the effective or RMS value of voltage in a circuit is compared to, say, the whole height of the wave. <clears throat> now, if we come back over here, we look at our simple circuit. Okay? What I'd like to do is just show that uh, Ohm's Law, loop rule, that kind of stuff is still applying when we've um, got AC rather than DC electricity. I've told you that theoretically in a lecture, but yeah, worth seeing it up close. So in addition to displaying one trace on the screen that's across the entire circuit, what we can do is we can take the second input of the oscilloscope and take these two leads, which are just hanging out here, and we'll bring them over. I'll put one in right there to that row. We'll get to why I'm doing that in just a second. Okay. And I'll bring this other one over here, and we'll put it into, pardon me, hard to do it on the video. Put that one right in there. Okay, so we got these two loose ends. And I just need to grab the other half of this connection. So you've got the pin there, and you've got the ground connection here. And so we just put that right across there. Ah, gotta really grab it. Okay, good. Okay, so what we're doing there is we're measuring across the one kilo ohm resistor. Okay, and that should give us, well, if we think about that, that represents almost 80% of the resistance in this circuit because you've got 1220 ohms of total resistance because they're in series and this represents one kilo ohm so most of that a little under 80% now if we want to display signal number two well signal number two has its own set of controls here so we hit the blue button and we see its menus and the trace come up here we just hit menu off for now and we see that the oscillating voltage drop across that one kilo ohm resistor, I have it on the same scale you see uh, here and here vertically. And that can be a little deceptive if you have them on two different scales. But we got on the same one here and you see that the blue trace is, well, at least by eye, approximately 80% of the height of the yellow trace, which is showing us the total voltage drop across the whole circuit as a function of time. Okay. Now, in terms of the measurements I'm making here, okay, in addition to having the RMS and peak-to-peak -peak values for the yellow trace across the whole circuit, 
we've got the peak to peak and RMS values across just the one kilo ohm resistor. And that gives us 1.73 volts, which is about 80% of 2.4. And it gives us 5.2-ish volts for the peak to peak. And that's again, about 80% of, of that value, okay? So, let's see, what else we need to put across here? Oh, yeah, so let's take a look at one more thing. And that's something that's a little bit particular to oscilloscopes and we have to be careful about. You notice how I was uh, measuring across the 1K instead of the 220, okay? What happens if we try to measure across the 220 like we would with like a, like a voltmeter under normal circumstances? So let's take a look at it. So we need to grab this guy, just put that right there. Cool. You notice the screen is down. now they're kind of matching up because I'm basically measuring across the whole circuit right now until I move this ground connection and I'm going to put it right there. Okay, there we go. So now we're just across the 220 ohm. But wait a second. We're the same height again. What is going on? Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, here, here's the deal, okay? By putting this ground right here, this, this sort of negative connection, what we'd normally call like the minus connection on a voltmeter or something like that, okay? Remember this is AC and this is an oscilloscope, okay? And if we look at these symbols right here, okay? So telling us a bunch of different things, okay? Don't go over 300 volts RMS or you're gonna blow something up. Has an input resistance of a mega ohm, great. Has some capacitance, and blah 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 blah. Uh, however, if you look at this symbol right there, see the pin and the shield. So that's the, uh, the little connection in the middle. So, uh, so this one, and the little shield, the little round thing right here, okay, is connected to this one, right, which goes back to the outer part of the conductor on the, on the cable. Now, notice that the shield here in this symbol is connected to this little symbol, which is earth or ground, okay? Yeah. So what we've done effectively is we've put, by putting the, the ground connection right here, and I'm gonna point with my handy dandy screwdriver, by putting it right here, this resistor right there, is receiving no current. All of the current goes from the hot side of the circuit, so to speak, okay, the orange wire, down through the 220 ohm, and then there's a ground right there. And so as the voltage changes polarity, current is either flowing from ground or towards ground as it oscillates back and forth, but this receives no current. And so the, uh, the voltage drop across the circuit is the same whether we're looking across the signal blue that goes across the 220 ohm or across the the entire circuit the entire circuit now being just the 220 ohm resistor having effectively shorted out with a couple of ground points the 1k ohm resistor so uh, something to keep in mind if you ever did want to know directly well sort of indirectly the voltage drop across 220. So let me, let me put it back to where it was, put that back, put that back. So we're measuring across the 1K now, back to that situation, okay? And we're back to that situation on the display. What you can do with oscilloscopes is you can do mathematical operations with the two inputs. So here we know that the full voltage of the circuit minus the voltage drop across the 1K ohm resistor is going to be equal to the voltage drop across the 220 ohm resistor. So we can get math, nice, always want to do more math, and we go over here to dual waveform math, perfect, okay. And what we can do is we can set up options, right now it's taking one minus two, but you could add them or you could multiply them, and you could change what you're, what you're subtracting from what. But because the first source, yellow, is the total, and we're subtracting off, what we want to subtract off is the voltage drop uh, across the 1K, which is two. It's all set up the right way. Funny that, almost like I planned it that way. Um, so we get rid of all these menus. And there, okay, that red trace represents 
the machine taking all the data points it has from the yellow, all the data points it has from the blue, and subtracting the two to give you that red. Okay, and that way you can kind of back out the voltage drop across this, this element in the circuit. You can't put your leads from the oscilloscope straight across. So if you do, you put that ground in the middle and then things go a little haywire. Okay, so a few little bits and pieces about the oscilloscope. I'll ask you some questions about this uh, in the lab activity. And we might do mm, one more thing with the oscilloscope. Uh, well, we'll certainly be using it in other labs. So I guess I'll leave it there. And I'll see you again soon.